Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you four ways of how to adjust or change the contrast in an image using uh, GIMP 2.8. And this is the image that we're going to use. So first of all, I'll just make a quick duplicate so that I'm not destroying the original image. Uh, this image here is of a church in Edinburgh and uh, if we're wanting to just play around with the contrast there's a couple there's four ways which you can do it three of them are what we would call global adjustments because it affects the whole image so to do that if you go up to colors at the top here and then just go down to brightness contrast so the first one is the most simple and obvious of them all it's just a case of moving the contrast slider up and down. Now what contrast is, is if we go contrast up, the brights become brighter and the darks become darker. So as you can see, it just gives a little bit more punch, the brights, but certainly in the darker areas, see down here, let's see this, very, very much darker. And that's at about 20%. The brights, if we look closely around the, the church area, if we would bring that up to about 30. Let's see, that's kind of where it starts to go off this time it's probably brighter yes yeah, so it's much brighter there and down the shadows down here again getting a lot darker so not necessarily being bad to an image but just changing the image a good bit and um, what we just advise is don't go overboard with this part too much and um, i would say just play around with that just a tiny amount if you're if you're to bring the contrast down it means the white become a bit grayer and the blacks become a bit grayer as well so it just becomes a what we call a flatter image so a lot more detail in the shadows there and you can see kind of a lot more detail in the skies there but it's just a bit dull so it's not all that great i would actually see uh, the next option we'll just cancel that so it goes back to original is back into the colors and this time we've i wouldn't do threshold i'd go to levels levels is your next option so this uh histogram here is your your, your brightness of your image uh, all the way through if you go to the bright picker here and if you slide that down the way effectively the brights become brighter and the mid-tones get a little bit brighter but the darks, nothing really changes. So as you can see, bright's getting brighter, but if we go down to the dark areas here, nothing will really change. It's, it's pretty much the same amount of detail there. However, the brights are much brighter. It just looks like a brighter image. If we were to do it the other way where we bring the black up, what would happen is not really much would change in the bright tones, but the mid tones, because they're being pushed to the right, will get brighter and the dark tones will get a little bit darker as well. Oh, sorry, sorry, so what I meant, I meant the mid-tones will get a little bit darker and the dark tones get a little bit darker. I mean, well, the very, very brightest tones don't really change. So that's the way, if, if you're going, ah, oh, the, the dark, I need a little bit darker, but I don't want to change with the brights, then this is a good way of, of just dealing with either the low end or the high end. You can also play around with just the middle end. If you move the middle slider up to the right, that generally brings it down in brightness because you're effectively saying the middle brightness should be over here. And again, if you were to bring it down the way, uh, everything becomes a little bit more faded out, but so much more detail in the mid tones and in the darks, so let's see down here, so much more information, but that is a totally faded image. So again, no, not exactly what you need for every style of image. Again, so if I were to just go reset, so if I were to be editing this image myself, what I'd probably do is I'd want the, I'd probably want the darks to be a little bit darker, but the mid-tones to be a little bit brighter. So what I would do is I'd bring the mid-tone slider down, let's say 1.2, but then the darks up to about 12, 13. And as you see there, so the mid-tones are a little bit brighter, and the darks, which is a fraction, fraction darker uh, there as well. So that, that would be what I would do. However, the third option is editing these as curves. And as you can see, this little dot down at the bottom here is a little bit flat and to the right. That's saying all this information of the blacks has been just destroyed because I've made the contrast up a little bit there. So if I were to bring this back to the very corner, look closely at this dark area here, you'll then get all the details back again. So a just a fraction more details going in there, but I'm not really interested in the details of that area. Uh, and as you can see, it's a little bit above the midline in the middle area, so that means the mid-tones are a little bit brighter. For this image, I want the sky to be a little bit more punchy and the brights to be a little bit brighter. So what I would, I could either just 
boost it a touch like that. As you can see, that's bringing those tones up just a little bit there. And I could also maybe just drag the final point in just a touch as well. So that now we'll see the bright areas here just becoming a little bit more bleached out. Yeah, so, so they are now definitely bleached out. Um, but that, that's just another way of editing the image. What you can you can even do is you can start playing around with the individual colors as well. So let's say you want to just change the contrast of the blue. So I would want the, the, the blue bright parts to come down a bit, but then what happens is you start changing the color and it becomes a bit more orange as well. So you've got to be a little bit careful with that. So I'll just go cancel on that one there. Now the final, the fourth way of doing it is effectively the same as what we've done already, but it's doing selective uh, selecting. So in other words, let's say I just wanted to select the sky area. I could just use uh, the brush, the, the special brush, and I'll just, oh no, I'll just select all the sky. So, as, so now you see there's little uh, running dots uh, going around there. So what I've selected there is all the sky area. And I can now just go to select and I can do any of those things which I've done already. And let's say if I were to play with curves, you see the histogram is completely different because this histogram here now is just of the, the sky area. And as you can see, the sky is obviously the bright part of the image and that is now away over there. So if I wanted to go, let's just calm you down and uh, make you a little bit brighter, we can just bring the top in a touch there. And if we move around the bottom part of the slider, it does nothing because there is no darks in here until you get all the way very close up. But you'll notice that the angle of the the the, the adjustment is far steeper, so you get a much a more dramatic sky going on. So there, I've gone for a pretty darn dramatic sky. And the cool thing is I can just click OK and then if I want to go, wait, I want to change the, the contrast of all the rest of the image without touching anything, just going to select, go to invert, where is invert there. So now the, the, dot, the little running ads are still in the same place, but they're actually saying we're around everything else. And now if I go back to the colors and I go, let's say curves again, you'll notice totally different histogram. And now I'm working on the rest of the image. So I can go, let's just brighten you up a little touch, bring up your mid-tones a bit, which is making the actual church itself. So you'd probably do a different contrast curve for the church and a different one for the buildings around the side. But uh, that, I would say, is probably how I would do some editing and changing of the contrast in your images. So that's four ways of doing it using GIMP. 2.8 at the moment, which is a free photo editing software which you can get, which works on both Mac and on PC um, and is, is, is free as well. So it's very easy to use. So hope that helps. Cheers. Bye bye. And just before I go, just to remind any of you that don't know, I've got two other channels uh, on YouTube at the moment. One is my Don Bauer exercise channel where I'm doing lots of kind of posts about either my weight training or my fitness training or my marathon running and all that kind of stuff. And my other channel, which I've got, is called Dom Talk. So it's a whole bunch of videos about me just having things to say which may be completely wrong and I'm just asking you guys for tips and stuff which doesn't really relate to fitness and exercise or photography um, but more kind of stuff which is in the news and all that kind of stuff uh, and also showing videos of me playing with my niece and nephew uh, for their sixth birthday and almost killing them. So have a little check of those and uh, thanks for clicking like and subscribe. Cheers, bye bye.